there's been an idea of masculinity that's so toxic and so dangerous. And the reality is the most beautiful, strongest part of masculinity is saying, I'm not okay. I need some help. I'm on a mission to teach this all over the country. Every coach starts out the year with the same hope that their team is going to win a championship and everybody's going to stay together and this is going to be a joy ride that doesn't have any adversity. In life, that's not true. In football, that certainly isn't true. And we sit in their living rooms and we tell them that we're going to take care of them and we don't hide anything from anybody. I thought bringing Rachel to preseason camp was a little bit different approach, more of a conversation piece of, you know, how things are, are going to work from a woman's perspective and how that is viewed and, and really at a critical time. Coach Jason Kendall found that perspective in veteran sportscaster Rachel Barbo, whose new purpose is destigmatizing mental health in sports. I feel very strongly. This is much more than a job to me. It's my life. It's my baby. It's my passion. It's my movement. I created it from nothing. However you got here, whether you were helped in here or whether you chose to come here on your own, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for coming this morning. Thank you. I walked away from sports casting in 2019 while I was still employed. Welcome to the College Football Playoff National Championship. My name is Rachel Barbeau alongside Mark Brown. What a wild and wacky college football season it has been. I walked away because it, for me, was a conflict of the soul. Here I am. I'm a mentor. I'm a coach. I'm a facilitator. I'm a speaker. I'm all of these things. But then I would stick a microphone in a player's face afterwards and I could see the confusion come across his face like, wait a minute, I just told you about my anxiety. I just told you about my depression and I knew what I had to do. From that conflict, I'm Changing the Narrative was born, where Barbo returns to top college football programs to rewrite the narrative about sports and mental health. Thank you. Thank you that you really bring that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. These are guys that are fighting tooth and nail for every inch on the practice field for however many straight days and here comes this presentation on hey you can be vulnerable and you can tell your tough things that are going on in your life i think there's such a negative stigma around mental health when you're an athlete people forget that you're a person they want to judge you based on your performance on the field and people want to judge you on your performance at work or in life and they don't realize that people are going through stuff we live a life where it's all eyes are on you and mistakes are, are made so big. Sometimes it gets hidden a lot, how people really feel, and especially men, it's hard to really showcase how you're feeling to somebody and, and have somebody that really cares about you. People ask me this all the time. They say, what, what do you hope comes out of it, right? And I said, if one person feels less alone, if one person looks at that big bad football player and says, he can talk about his mental health, I can talk about my mental health. He's asking for help. He's saying don't struggle alone. I can do that too. Whether it's therapy or resources here, or whether it's a teammate, a friend. I talked to them about my own experience of domestic violence. And there were other men in the house that night. No one came to help me. I asked this question. If you were in that house that night, would you have helped me? What do you want to be different? Like, it was after my mom passed away, and I knew I was going to lose my house. I had a feeling. Uh, I was broke. I had just gone through a breakup, and I just lost my mom. And uh, I, I, I say usually it's just one thing that's the straw that breaks the camel's back. That's when it blew the lid off of the movement because people said, oh, my gosh, you've been through that too. You've heard those voices. And you can say, hey, listen, I've talked about my mental health. I've gotten real with my teammates. I've dropped the mask. It's hard when you feel like you're alone and you have nobody there for you. She provided us with a lot of tools, not only for ourselves, but we can use for people to help as well. So if there's somebody in your life, there's somebody that you love that's struggling, now you know how to help them, right? Now you know, tell them, don't struggle alone. Being student athletes, it kind of gets hidden a lot because we have practice and we have school and we have all this. Uh, people have real life problems and real life issues. And I think that her presentation bonded this team together and allowed us to come together in a way that I haven't seen before in, in any teams I've been a part of. Rachel's testimony emboldened the Rockets to share its impact outside the four walls of the team room as the University of Toledo hosted a mental health awareness game. 
Rocket fans, five out of five of us will struggle with our mental health when times get tough. Just like a football team has a game plan for the game, we all need to have a mental health plan for when times get tough. We ask you to stand for yourself, a friend, or a loved one who has battled mental health to show support. The thing that happens with me, maybe versus some other speakers, is I don't speak and leave. I create relationships. Like seeing the older guys, like I know other guys said, like they always walk in with a smile on their face and they're always happy around other guys, but like deep down they have problems too. It made me realize that like having issues is okay and yeah. opening up is the best thing to do. What was going to be a 45 minute team meeting turned into a two or three hour conversation here on just people coming up and letting things go and, and that really put into perspective what these young people go through and sheds light on the bigger problem throughout our country. You have two choices when you go through it, bitter or better. And for a long time I was bitter and now I choose to be better and I choose to help other people be better because of it.